Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to go over everything that you need to know to become knowledgeable in Hockey Ultimate Team for NHL 22. Whether you're a complete noob or you've been playing the game for the last 5 to 10 years, you will learn something in this video. I'm going to cover starting your team, what to focus on if you're free to play, what rewards are released and when, what modes are worth the time, and a ton more. Guys, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like. It really helps me out. And subscribe for the most up-to-date NHL 22 content. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, so if you're loading up the game for Hockey Ultimate Team, just choose your favorite team. This is going to impact your starter pack. It is going to give you the home arena and jerseys, as well as a few gold players at the end from your favorite team. There's no advantage for the gold players that you will receive. Those will be replaced very, very quickly. But it's much more difficult to get your favorite team's home arena and jerseys. So go ahead and pick your favorite team. Mine is the San Jose Sharks. And then we'll go on to actually creating your team. All right, guys. So once you've created your team, you then will go on to your starter pack. And now this is going to be pretty basic for everyone. Like I said, whatever is your favorite team that you choose when you fire up the game for the first time, you'll get their jerseys and the arena. Then after that, you're going to get a bunch of bronze and silver cards. These guys will not be on your team for very long, I promise you. And especially if you're no money spent, I will walk you through making sure that this does not, uh, these players do not stay in your lineup for very long. Now, the one thing about this pack is you will receive an X Factor, a random 74 overall X Factor. I'm kind of curious on who I get in this one. If you don't know which X Factors are of the best value, go and check out my video on it. I walk you through all of the ones that are actually worth investing in in NHL 22 and I'm hoping that I get uh, one of the better 74s and let's see Adam Fox not bad okay he is mentioned in one of the ones that is worth upgrading so I will take that all right 74 Adam Fox welcome to the squad Will Borgen from the Kraken and then Cogliano Rudolph Balsers and my captain Logan Couture so again this team is not very good but it's a start and this is where everyone has to start let's get into the actual building of the team now all right now once you load into the game you're going to get a free daily login pack this is on a 24-hour cooldown and it is going to give you basically a random coin allotment some silver players and then uh, a seasonal collectible that we will talk about in a little bit. These are important, and they do offer some value. So if you can, try and log in at least once a day. If not, then no worries. You're not missing out on anything detrimental. But this will give you an advantage down the road by collecting as many as you can. All right, so here we are. We are in Hockey Ultimate Team. This is the main menu and where everything is going to take place outside of actually playing the game. So where do we start first? Well, we need to know how our team is set up. So if you go all the way over to the My Team tab and then click in here is your first look at what your team is going to look like you're going to get a bunch of tutorial things and that's fine just go ahead and ignore those as uh, this video is going to walk you through and show you everything uh, that these things are going to and it's going to be a lot clearer and more helpful in my opinion so the one thing i want to say guys is to give yourself the best advantage there will be a strategies and how to score and all that kind of stuff video on my channel but just for the basics and setting things up especially for squad battles and offline play just make sure you have right-handed wingers on the right side and left-handed wingers on the left side outside of that there isn't really much else to worry about again this team is not going to stay like this and in all honesty you're probably not even going to have any of the bronze or silvers in your lineup once I show you what to do after you've started the game go over to defense same thing the point meta is super important in NHL 22 it is a very effective way to score so you want to make sure you have right-handed defensemen on the left side and left-handed defensemen on the right side after that, take a look at who's in net for you. It's not going to be very good. Head coach, we will discuss in a little while. But basically, what the head coach does is give you a free uh, synergy. And again, we'll talk about synergies in just a little bit. So now that we've got our team set, let's go and take a look at what to do next. All right, guys. So once you have created your team, you've got your lineup set. Now it's time to open up any packs that you might have. Now, I'm releasing this video during early access. So I need to mention, if you have not received your pre-order packs for pre-ordering the game, those will come on the full launch of the game on October 15th. Some people have received the pre-order packs or loyalty packs. They are game changers, and they have a full code to the game. That is why they have it. It says it right in the one banner on the screen. For anyone that is asking that my comments have been absolutely stuffed with them, you will get them on October 15th. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the loyalty packs and see if we can pull anything of value. Now, from my experience, loyalty packs don't really have anything of value in them, but what you're really looking for is gold NHL players or just players that will actually make your team. Silver players 
players are fine as well. I'll show you what to do with them. But all the jerseys and everything like that, they aren't really going to have much use to you, but I will show you with what to do. I will show you what to do with all of these. And again, nothing really here. Peyton Krebs might make the team right off right off the rip because you've got silver and bronzes on your team. And that's fine. We're going to make sure that we upgrade the team as best as possible before we get into the actual gameplay because you need to be at, you know, the biggest advantage that you can possibly get. But in all honesty, the loyalty packs, you're probably not going to receive much. Okay, third pack in, got the 81 training camp Oscar Clefbaum, not a bad pull early on, I'm not going to lie, that will have some use, especially for our starter team. This entire account will be free to play as well, and there will be a free to play series on my YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe, and we'll see the journey of this squadron, but for this video, I'm just using it to show you guys exactly what to do from the start of the game. As we continue ripping our loyalty packs. Alright, so I packed a power-up collectible. I will explain what those do in just a little bit. They are for your X-Factor cards. And I want to explain the value of them and what you should do with them. So just hold on to those. Don't uh, don't use them or don't sell them uh, until, until later on in the video. Alright guys, we've opened up all of the loyalty packs. Let's go through and adjust the team again. So I'll go through and add in all of the players that would replace the current you know, lower tier stuff that we've got on the squad. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up. All right, so I've gone ahead and updated the team after opening up all of my loyalty packs. And obviously now you see the team is in much better shape. Is it good? Absolutely not. But is it much better than the bronze and silvers that were on the team? 100%. And we'll talk about what to do with Adam Fox in just a moment because that opening X Factor is going to provide some value for you, especially early on. After you have done that, this is going to depend on if you're free to play or pay to play. If you are pay to play, meaning that you are going to spend money on the game, nothing wrong with that. I want to show you guys the correct way to spend money at this game because there is a much more effective way if you are actually going to put money into it. So, when it comes to buying packs, never buy these premium packs. You'll see that they cost 150 points or 7,500 coins. Never buy packs with coins. However, the 150 points for this is, uh, is going to seem like, wow, that is super cheap. The problem is the odds of pulling anything are damn near impossible. Trust me, I have opened up way too many of these, and you need to stop spending money on these. They will. This is how EA gets their money back. When it comes to these limited packs, so you'll see ones that have all different colors, things like that, and will have a specific quantity tied to them. These are the ones that you want to spend your money on. So if you are going to put 100 bucks into the game, let's say, for example, you're going to get an allotment of points. You want to spend your points only on these until you've hit the max. Once you have hit the max and it says you aren't able to open anymore, it'll start a 24-hour countdown, and in 24 hours, you can open them again. Diamond hands, folks. Do not run out of these and then go to the essential go to the premium packs do not do that open up the limited ones and then hold on all right what's next after that you want to go to hut central and go over to objectives now in here you will see a tab that says tutorial you need to go through these because they are going to give you free packs and players and that is what we're all about especially if you're free to play so click into here and all you've got to do is go down and read each single one okay so if you just click x or a depending on the console you're on and just skip through all of these it's going to give you the stuff required to go and put them into sets and again that is how you're going to get the free stuff if you want and you're brand new to hut go ahead and read these it is important but again i'm going to cover everything probably in more detail and show you exactly on screen everything that they're saying in here so that's up to you but go ahead and finish all of this all right so you've completed it all what's next you hit y you will collect all of your rewards and then you want to get out of here and go back to the store tab you will now see everything is in your item inbox you want to see all of these things so all of these you want to just send to your collection the big important one is this tips collectible right here so go ahead click left thumbstick in go to send all to collection and now let's go and talk about sets because this is where you're going to go to complete it so go to exchange and then go to sets here once you're into sets, we'll talk about all of these. Don't you worry. Go all the way over to tips. Once you're in tips, you want to click in and then autofill. You can autofill by clicking in on the left thumbstick. And it will autofill that one tip collectible that you received by completing those objectives. Hit Y to complete the set. And now you're off and running. So if you get out of this menu, okay, so hit B, go all the way back to the main menu. And if you go to the store, you will see here, I have a pack that was open or from, from completing an objective, but you'll see this tips rewards one, open that up and that will allow you to complete the next set in that tips set. So go ahead and collect all of these cards. You'll get a bunch of free stuff. It's whatever. 
They're really just about trying to collect these uh, these tip collectibles to help you walk you through the early part of the game. So once you're done that, actually, we'll rip this one as well, just in case. Imagine we pull Wayne Gretzky or something out of these. That would be insane. All right, we didn't get anything. That's fine. Moving on. Now let's go over to sets. Go back to the tip set and walk you through here. So again, you go into this second tab. It requires any bronze player and any of the, and the three tip collectibles that you received. Go ahead and finish that. Hit complete set. And again, we're going to repeat this all the way until that we've finished it entirely. From this menu, guys, if you hit the right trigger, you can go to unopened packs and just do it from right there instead of going all the way back to the main menu. So again, we're looking for some cool stuff. It would be awesome to pull something for the video, but more than likely, you're just going to get silvers and stuff that's kind of useless right now. But I will show you what to do with them and why it is valuable to get this stuff. Again, it's for free, so you need to take the few minutes and go ahead and do this. All right, so we rinse and repeat. Here is the third one done as we move along to completing it as we are almost at the end of this and the ending reward is a nice pack that has the chance of pulling something that's actually of value again these ones leading up to it aren't really all right darcy kemper there's our new starting goaltender we'll take that that's okay and again this is just for free so there's really no harm in that as well as jeff skinner probably going to make the team as well all right, lastly, guys, on the last set, you're gonna it's going to require you to put a few gold players in. Try your best to make sure that it is non-NHL gold players, and I will explain why in just a little bit. So if you go to search collection, just go through and see if there is any non-NHL gold players. So Tara Horosi, for example, is an AHLer. That's fine. And then go ahead and complete the set. If you have no other options, that's fine. Just make sure it's someone that isn't going to play on your team. Go ahead and complete it, and now you've completed all of the tip sets, and we'll go ahead and see what we opened up. So you will get a player's pack. It's 10 items, all players, and at least five gold players with 180-plus overall. That's why this set is valuable, because you're going to get someone no matter what that will make your team, especially if you are free to play. So we'll see if we pull anything cool. That would be awesome, again, for the content. Nothing really here, a lot of low... Uh, a lot of low 70s, and Thomas Grice is not it. So that's unfortunate, but nonetheless, I've seen people pull icons out of here. So we got a ton of gold play gold and silver players, and again, it was worth it. It's all for free. Now that we have completed those sets, you want to make sure that you're always finishing up any objectives. Up at the top right there, you see that we've got a, a blue four there. That means that you've got objectives to, to hand in. So you click on objectives, and you will see if you click on weekly. I've completed three sets, so you can hit A on that, and it will complete it, and it'll give you a reward. Sometimes it's coins sometimes it's packs whatever it doesn't matter just make sure that you are finishing that if you hit rb and go to milestones these ones are a little bit bigger and have a a lot more uh, rewards tied to them but obviously it's the long game uh, you you're gonna see here like i get mini pack set but doing it all as you go you'll see that the pack increases in terms of value as you go along but we're gonna talk about sets and milestones in just a little bit so again as you can see here we've got some free packs to open easy to go and rip and just again we'll get free cards that's all we're we're looking for and we'll see what we can take always take nhl gold players you see here we've got an 81 jake ottinger well he's not a bad card goaltender he's a not non nhler and those aren't going to have as much value in this case i'm probably going to take dylan cousins because i think that he is the best forward and again will definitely make our team so welcome to the squad dylan cousins and you'll see here guys it's very easy to just get free cards right off the rip that's why i wanted to make sure i walked you through it and showed you exactly where to go early on now let's talk about the the other sets that are available to you in hockey ultimate team starting first with the training camp event set so whenever there is an event events will happen on friday the first one that will take place after the training camp event will be the superstar origins event and that will take place at launch of the full game on october 15th those will always be released at 5 p.m eastern time on Fridays so they will last two weeks so this event specifically is going to last it's the EA play one it's just for the pre-order and early access players after that you will get the first one so it is a good indication of how they work though so you'll you'll always get sets and things to do with these ones specifically so I just want to explain the ins and outs of these so this one specifically exclusive training camp player item set so you trade in event collectibles and you will get an 80 overall choice pack so by acquiring these training camp collectibles you do these by doing offline challenges and i'll show you where those are in just a little bit you will get an OED overall choice pack. Don't do this set. It is not worth it. I will show you what to do with those collectibles. All right, so you need to work towards completing this set. This is the most important thing to do early on, and the reason is is that the cooldown is 30 days 
So you only have one shot to get McDavid's X Factor early on. And because your team is so bad early, especially if you're free to play, you're going to need help. X Factors are a great way to get your team improved early on. So what you so if you have a, an abundance of gold players, I would try to do everything in my power to A, make sure that they're untradeable, and B, make sure they're not NHL players, and I'll explain why in just a little bit. But if you can't avoid it, that's fine. Just don't put any, you know, great 80, 85 overalls or anything like that. Make sure it's the 80 and above. The guys that would not make your team, they go into this set and you want to do it as fast as possible. You've got two other X-Factor sets here. It's gold players to a power-up collectible. So you can trade in 36 gold players and receive a power up collectible i will talk about what those are do not do either of these sets the other one is less players but they're all 80 and above please do not do these sets they are not worth the value not even close so after you've completed this 20 gold player trade-in for your x-factor choice pack let's move on seasonal rewards so i talked about every time that you log in every 24 hours you will receive a seasonal reward collectible and this is going to depend on how much you play so if you are someone that is going to log into the game every single day, I would 100% recommend dumping them all into the far left one, and that is a Power Up Icon Choice Pack. Power Up Icons are the greats from the past. They have immense value and are extremely difficult to obtain. So a Choice Pack, getting one is extremely valuable. It is going to take forever. Now, not only will you get seasonal reward collectibles by logging in daily, you can also go back to the objective screen and you will see objectives that you can can complete for an extra daily seasonal reward so right here you'll see the daily objective complete two games complete a hut challenge score five goals and win three games in hut rush as well as win a shootout in rivals or sorry win one shutout in rivals hut champs or squad battles so if you do all of these in one day you will get a seasonal reward again this is on a 24-hour cooldown and it will reset at 5 p.m eastern time now let's pretend that you're not going to play the game every day like the majority of the player base what are the what are the next best options again gauge how much you've got the seasonal rewards being now seasonal and not month to month offer you a lot more time so while it's fall you will have a shot at all of these so just do the math in your head if you log in 40 times you will get 185 plus overall guaranteed player pack i would not recommend this because you could get a card that just has no value to you and it's very very risky for a huge investment in time you can get a power-up collectible. That's 36 seasonal rewards. Again, I don't recommend that one. And as you go down, you will see more and more choice choice packs and other guaranteed ones. The ones I would recommend doing are the Jumbo Elites as well as the Mega Pack, the X-Factor Player Choice Pack. This is probably the one I would focus on first. And then the Premium Players Pack. Do not do any of the 83 or 84 overall or even 85 guaranteed players pack because it might it might be a card that you won't even make your team and it just doesn't offer enough value other than you know what these ones will do. Uh, getting a pack will give you a shot at a huge payday um, and give you some more cards that you can use in sets or whatnot. So if you are going to be someone who cannot log in and play as much to get the Power Up Icon Choice Pack, make sure that you're dumping these into the pack options for the seasonal rewards. Next, let's talk about team building sets. All right, so a huge change to team building in NHL 22 has you collecting various overall players for every team to get some super powered cards. So if you... So no longer do you have to collect every player for every team. They've now changed it where you need a various amount of 74 to 79 gold players and then different levels of 80 to 83 gold players. So this is why early on I said do not get rid of your gold NHL players because they will have immense value. Now, the team building sets for free-to-play players. Guys, I would not recommend trying to chase these because every time that you do a team building set, you will get one 85 overall team builder card. So Andy fi 85 Andy McDonald would be the Ducks if you complete and collect all of the Ducks overall cards that you need to, and that will get you 85 Andy McDonald. If you wanted more information on the full team builder list and my thoughts on each one, I have a team builder video, and I will link it down in the description that you can go and watch, and I give full details on that. Now, what do you do once you have that Andy McDonald? Well, you can use him on your team, or you can cash him in along with seven other players in the Pacific Division to get a Pacific Division team building choice set. There are three 90 overall players. They are some of the best cards in the game. 
but the cost is absolutely astronomical, again, especially if you're free to play. I will have a video that will show you the players that actually want to go after these sets, the best way to do it. But for free-to-play players, in all honesty, what I would do is take advantage of the high cost that these cards are going to be. For free-to-play players, here is what I would recommend doing. It is The cost involved is just astronomical, like I said. So here's what you want to do. Let's say you've packed this Villy Hughes, so you've got it. You have no intention of completing the St. Louis Blue team building set. So what do you do? You go over to the 7479 St. Louis Blues. You click on A on that, and then go down to Search Auction House. This is going to bring up all of the cards currently in that range. So as you can see, the buy now is set at $1,500 for McKecker, $1,350 for Logan Brown. And as you go down, there'll be various other buy now prices. This is going to give you an indication of what you can sell it for. This is being recorded in early access, and I can guarantee you with all of the free-to-play players that are going to come out that are going to try and complete these team builder sets, they are going to go probably for much more than this, probably around 2K if I had to guess. We'll see, but again, you are going to make a ton of coins by selling these cards. And selling your cards is what you want to do if you're free-to-play because you need guaranteed rewards. Getting packs and things like that is great, but you need to make sure that you've got coins because then you can make the smart buys and buy the cards that are of good value. So team builder sets, if you're free to play, please avoid. And if you want to go after the team building sets, make sure you stay tuned to my channel. Subscribe as I will have a team builder or a how to build and actually acquire your team building cards because I have actually done all of them. All right, guys, and the last sets option we have is exchange. So what do you do with the exchange the exchanges here. You've got many here. We'll start from left to right. We'll go with the bronze upgrade first. So as you can see here, you'll trade in eight bronze players and you will get two silver players packs. They will be untradeable. I would recommend not doing that at all and just selling the players. Silver upgrade as well. You will see a lot of people that will do this set and say, hey, you've got a shot at great players. I'm going to do it for you right now as I can do it. We've got enough silver players here. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this set. All right, it's going to take eight silver players. And we're going to go ahead and see what I actually get here. You'll get two gold players and they will be untradeable. Now you do have an op you do have the ability to pull X factors and things like that. 78 Joey Anderson and then 74 Robert Burkert. Now you can't sell these. So these are just... In, you know, these are just your cards. You can't quick sell them for any value. This is why I don't recommend doing them. Now, a lot of people will say, but yeah, but you get gold so that you can do the gold trade in set, which is next. So you trade in gold players under 80 overall. Well, you can trade in any gold player, and you will get a two player pack that will give you a guaranteed 180 overall and higher. Yes, you can pull Crosby. Yes, you can pull McDavid. Absolutely. The odds on that are astronomical. And if you go online, you'll see. Tons of people that have insane pulls by doing this set. You also won't see the 5,000 times that other people have done this and gotten nothing. Let me explain why these sets are not worth it in just a little bit. So as you go here, there's another one where you exchange 80 plus overall golds and you'll get 10 items, all players, at least five golds and one guaranteed overall 82 plus overall player. Again, super not worth it in my opinion. Well, let's go and take a look at these, the customization exchanges. So you can trade in jersey numbers and you will get a mini pack. You can trade in captaincy items. You'll get a base pack. Celebration exchanges, you'll get a premium pack. And then goalie mass, you'll get a base pack. You'll have a lot of these. Again, I would not recommend doing these sets, and I will explain why in just a little bit. You've also got these ones, the team items exchanges. As you go along here, you'll see there's one for everything. And again, I will show you why these are not worth doing. So one of the biggest comments that I'm going to get in this video, and I want you to listen closely before you comment because I already know what's coming for anyone that has played HUT. If you go over to objectives, in prior years, there has been milestones that give you phenomenal rewards. They used to be icon players. They used to be a ton of collectibles. That was basically the currency of the game. But those collectibles are no longer in the game. I'm talking about golds. And the icon players are nowhere to be found in these milestones. If you go and look at the rewards for the milestones, let's talk about sets specifically. If you complete 10 sets, you get a base pack. 25 will get you a premium. 50 will get you a prime. 100 will get you a premium 4 gold player pack. 200 players pack. 300 jumbo premium pack, 400 a power up collectible pack, and 500 a premium players pack. And then at the end, you'll get collecting them all will get you a jumbo NHL players pack. There is no way on this planet that you can tell me that by trading in all of those silver and gold and customization options that you would rather have the chance at pulls with these packs 
as opposed to guaranteed coins. If you want to go ahead and do this, that's completely okay. I'm just trying to give you the best ways to set yourself up for success. And doing these for a chance, you're gambling, which is fine. Again, opening packs is fun. If that's how you want to go about it, go ahead. But the value of those other cards can make you a ton of coins, especially because gold players are now the currency in NHL. So now let's take a look at the auction house. I'm going to give you a basic rundown and just, you know, some very, very basic ways to actually make coins and use the auction house. So for if you want to hit browse auction here, this is where you're going to find all the players that are currently available in the auction house. If you hit Y or triangle, it'll allow you to go over here and set different filters and things that you can find players. So how do you make money and how do you make, what are the best things to buy early on or just in general? Well, in my opinion, because of how the team builder sets work and because they are going to be so hard to acquire, if if you click on league and go to NHL and then go to buy now price range, I want you to set this to a thousand. Okay. Once you've set it to a thousand, click on gold here. And now you've got players. These will all go into the team builder sets and they are the cheapest up that you will find. If you are looking to make money early, I can almost guarantee you that because of how the currency works in this game and that gold players will be the most important in terms of trading things in, you're going to want to buy any of these players that are around 1,000 by now. They will not be lower. I can guarantee you that. So as it stands right now during early access, there's only 18 cards up that are NHLers that are golds that will sell for 1,000 by now. If you click on a card, okay, you will have an option to place a bid. If you look at the start price for this one, it's $9.50. I would recommend if you want to min-max or just find any cards, sit on the gold, play, gold NHL players, click on them, and then hit place bid. That will take out $9.50, and you will get that for slightly cheaper. The buy now price is $1,000. But if you set this to a little bit higher, let's say $2,000, and take a look at what's available, you'll also see that there's some that you will find that are, you know, their buy now price is much higher but their starting price is only 950. So just go ahead and look and be on the be on the lookout for that. Try and snipe some. The best times to buy in the auction house is late at night Eastern time. There's just not a lot of people up. So midnight and later on the Eastern uh, Eastern time, that is when you're going to see a lot of these steals. Overall, if you're looking for players, the best time to buy in general. I'm not talking about the cheap cards. I'm talking about literally anything. So let's say new prime times come out or you're looking at like let's say, you know, base Kucherov, things like that. The best time to buy is always going to be 5 p.m. on Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And that is because that is when rewards come out. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. All right, so now let's quickly talk about posting in the auction house. So if you click on post and hit search collection, it's going to give you all of the things that you can actually spend. It's going to give you all the things that you can actually put inside the auction house. So you can't use anyone that's on your team. The little check mark will indicate that they are on your team. So if you want to go through and sell any of these cards, you can. Now, what I was saying about silver items is that currently you can't sell them for anything more than uh, auction them, sorry, for anything less than 450. No one is going to buy these for 450 when they realize that the set milestone is completely bunk and there's no reason in actually completing sets. So what you can do is actually quick sell these. So we will talk about quick selling in just a little bit, but that is what I would recommend doing. But if you're going to put up a card, always make sure that you take a look at how much it is going for and you can do that by dip doing various different ways. So, like, let's say you want to sell Peyton Krebs, okay? You've got the 75 overall. Just do what I was saying earlier in the team builder set. So, if we go back to team building, I will show you, again, real quick, how to actually just sell it for the most of that. Make sure you're not, you know, undercutting yourself. You don't want to be giving away a card that is phenomenal value for free because, you know, you didn't do your due diligence. So, let's go all the way to Vegas here. Again, this is the easiest way to do it. Go to Vegas. Hit autofill. It'll put Peyton Krebs in there. And you can click on click on over here, the 74 to 79 item. Search auction house. And the cheapest up is 10,000 buy now. Now there is some there is some starting prices that are 950 with no buy now. Those would be great buys and investments. But as you can see here, this is very early on during early access. 10,000 coins. So let's pretend that everyone is trying to complete Vegas, you will get people that are desperate enough to pay 10000 for Nolan Patrick. So you can put Peyton Krebs up for like 9999 If he doesn't sell, he doesn't sell. But make sure you're undercutting just the cheapest there. Don't go way lower. There's no point. All right, now let's get to actual gameplay. So now you've got a full grasp 
of everything for you, you know, in terms of how the milestones work, the objectives, the auction house sets. Let's get to actually playing. So squad battles, how does it work? Let's get a crash course real quick. Click into squad battles and here you will see the team of the week. You can hit Y or triangle and you will actually see the team of the week here that you will be playing, okay? And if you want to know if these cards are any valuable, they're, they're able to be pulled all the way from release, which is Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And they run all the way until the next one is released, which is 5 p.m. Wednesday at Eastern Time. So you can pull all of these cards until this Wednesday coming up at 4.59, and then the new Team of the Week will come out. All right, so you've got the Team of the Week here. This is going to work a little bit different. I want to show you guys just how these card or how these ones works. How this works. All right, you've got four teams right here that you can go ahead and play. I would recommend just starting with the lowest overall first, and you can actually see their lines and active synergies and all of that. So if we click on here, you will have a bunch of different options. If you are brand new to the game, I would recommend recommend playing on rookie or pro at the highest and you will see as you go up in difficulty the possible points will accumulate so if you want to get the max amount of points in squad battles you got to play on superstar and then you've got to set your period length to four minutes if you aren't going to grind and you have not you have no interest in squad battles in my opinion if you can't get the max amount of points and i will explain how in just a second i would recommend just playing either maybe on four minutes and on a lower difficulty or just set it to two minutes and you know play Play is 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 what it is getting points is better than not playing at all so however you want to go about it that's fine now once you're in here you will see the possible points 2279 that's important because if you go to rank you will see that earning points will get you a various amount of rewards now we're in early access right now so these were these tiers are not going to reflect what they will um come the launch of the game but the rewards that you will get are absolutely astronomical in squad battles because not only are you going to get packs, you're going to get guaranteed coins as well. Top 100, in my opinion, probably not something you want to aim for. You're basically going to have to get the max score in every game. And how do you get the max score? Well, like I said, you need to play all the way on the highest difficulty and you need to set the period length to four minutes. Now, on top of that, you need to win by five goals and have 20 plus shots. So you could win five nothing with 20 shots. You could win 10 five with 20 shots. That's fine as long as those two metrics are hit. Now, once you've completed one, okay, you want to complete the rest, and then you hit X, and you will get four new opponents. You do not have to wait. You can play all 36 of your games in one go if you wanted to. And as you require points, you will move up the board here. What do you want to aim for? Honestly, I would try and get Elite 3. Once you get in here, you'll earn about 17,000, well, anywhere between 14 to 17,000 coins. And it's a lot more easier of a tier to get to. But again, you're going to have to play all of your squad battle games. You're going to have to you know, plan for that. It's going to take uh, quite a commitment. And if you're not someone who enjoys squad battles, I wouldn't recommend playing very much. The other thing I need to mention about squad battles is if you lose or if you don't get the maximum score... You can only try again once. So once you have finished the game, there will be a thing that says replay for 500 coins and you can replay it. I wouldn't really recommend doing this early on because again, 500 coins is kind of valuable, especially for free to play players. So just do with that as you please. Again, if, you, if you're if you losing consistently, move down to difficulty. It's better to actually get the points than lose on a higher difficulty. The thing about Team of the Week, be careful about Team of the Week, guys. You only get one shot at beating the Team of the Week for max points, but it is worth double the points, okay? So if you do not win 5x5 five five and have 20-plus shots on goal, you don't get the try again. So make sure that you. I usually save the, the Team of the Week to the very end because then I at least know where I'm going to land, and you know it makes it a little bit safer. So I would recommend not messing around and make sure that you're dialed in for this one because you only get to try it once. Now, the rewards on this... Yes, the season will run until Wednesday at 5 p.m. That is when the new season or the new week of squad battles will begin. So you have got until Wednesday at 5 p.m. to get your games in. The rewards that you see, you will receive those on Thursday at 5 p.m., which is, again, another good time to check the auction house for good buys because there will be a lot of packs opened in the market. If you're looking for tips on how to win squad battles, I will have a video out for that very shortly and make sure that will walk you through how to actually win consistently on Superstar. All right, what's next? Now for our online players, we've got Hut Rivals. This is the main online game mode. So when you log in for the first time, you will have five placement games. You'll have to play five games, and depending on how well you do, that will put you in a different division. So if you win all five, you might be in Division 3. If you lose all five, you're probably in Division 10. Either way, it's fine. This is skill-based matchmaking. It is going to match you up against your 
your level. So as you improve, you're going to play against better players. And again, I will have videos that will walk you through how to become better at the game. Now for rivals, you're going to have different tiers and the rewards are going to be a little bit different. It is based on the amount of players that are in that range. So Diamond, Platinum, Ultimate, those are all going to depend on how many people are up that high. You've got 50 total games that you can play in one week, and the season will run from Tuesday at 5 p.m. until the following Tuesday at 5 p.m. You will get your rewards for Rivals at 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. Whenever you finish, you will then, that is where you will land. Early on, you will have a choice in Rivals of what your rewards are. They are either packs, Double the packs, but they're all untradeable, or coins. Honestly, the safest and best route to go is the coins. Always just guarantee yourself a lot of coins. That is the biggest, but that's really not any fun. If you're free to play, and even if you're pay to play, I would probably go untradeable early on because you're going to get the biggest chance at good pulls that you can use on your team. And then that will change as the year goes on to untradeable because, again, then you can make some money on the market. Once you have a god tier team, there's no reason to pull untradeable cards because there's very little chance you'll pull something that can actually be put on your squad the other online mode is hut champs the first season for hut champs will not begin for about a week after launch of the game and how hut champs works is you need 2,000 hut champs points and you'll get that by winning rivals the higher the division you're in the more hut champs points you will earn for every win Cash those in, and then you will get to play in Hut Champs. It is 20 games of the sweatiest games that you will get. It is win-based. You are trying to win as many games out of 20 that you possibly can, and you will get rewards based on how many wins you get. If you are a good player, I would recommend doing it. If you are new to the game, I would avoid this and spend more time on squad battles or just rivals in general. When you're playing Hut Champs, your games do count towards your 50 rivals games, and they do give you rivals points while you're playing them. The one caveat is that you will only receive... 50% of the points playing Hut Champs games for Rivals than you would by playing an actual Rivals game. So, in all honesty, if you want to max it out, you play your 50 Rivals games first, get as many points as you can, and then play your 20 Hut Champs games. But, I mean, uh, people have jobs, so that's just simply impossible for the most, most people. And the last thing I want to mention about Rivals is that it's the same thing. You need to score five goals. That'll get you the most Rivals points and win. So just keep that in mind. But in all honesty, just focus on winning. All right, next, we've got Hut Rush. This is the other game This is the other game mode against other players of the CPU, I guess, that you can play in Hockey Ultimate Team. And it does offer nice rewards, especially for free-to-play players. So there are multiple different ways to play this game. But we'll take a look at the first one, which is the X-Factor Rush. So in this one, you're going to draft the team. It is first to three. It's very arcadey. The one thing I will say, the best way to bang out all of these and get the rewards is to look at the objectives, play the CPU on Rookie, complete these objectives, and then play either online against the CPU on a much higher difficulty or play online against other players, either one. But I would just do play on Rookie against the CPU to complete the objectives because you will get a big chunk of of the um uh, of the rewards done so the rewards in hut rush it's a lot of untradeables but you will get a ton of packs and as you can see here if you go all the way down this season will end october 15th after a million points you will get a power up collectible and you can see here the packs that you get as well are very valuable again i think that you should do this after you have completed rush or sorry after you have completed rivals and squad battles then do hut rush if you're trying to max it out but rush is a nice kind of laid back way to play the game so if you're not trying to grind it out and bang your head against the wall Hut Rush is usually the way to go. The last thing I want to talk about are the X Factors this year. They are the biggest game changer for you in Hockey Ultimate Team. So we packed Adam Fox, and in my opinion, he is worth upgrading. And as you can see, as you go through the tiers, you can upgrade him. Honestly, early on, guaranteeing yourself a very usable card is kind of worth it. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to purchase a few tiers here for Adam Fox because I think he is worth it, and we don't have very many good players on this team. And if you're free to play, go ahead and do the same thing. But once you get to the more expensive, just sit and wait, and you want to make sure that you're just selling your gold players that you can, as well as your silvers and bronzes as well. You want to get rid of any of the the excess cards in your collection uh, because you're just those are you're just sitting on points and as I explained earlier the sets just aren't really worth it all right lastly let's talk about x factors so you are going to get a free x factor in your starter pack in my opinion outside of the ones that are worth investing in I really wouldn't invest in it but because you have limited options it's very very cheap to get them up to close to their highest level so in most cases you probably just want to do it for every single one of your starter pack but let's just talk quickly about x factors now again I have a video that will break them all down but as you go up tiers, it will cost you more and more money. And then finally, the last tier is usually the is always the most expensive. This one will require Adam Fox's base card, 
or 20,000 coins to hit his final tier. I really don't need to do that right now because it's only going to give me one more speed and an extra synergy. But there's really, again, like I said, there's no real need for that. Adam Fox is a good investment because he's got 87 speed, 87 acceleration for a defenseman early on, and that's obviously a big advantage. And again, I have team build videos that will walk you through that. Now, lastly, what to do with the rest of the stuff in your collection. So go to my collection, and if you hit Y, it will bring you up to this screen where you can search through your entire collection. Here is what I recommend doing every single player, even if you're pay to play or free to play. If you go to customization, go ahead and sell all of this that is tradable. So if you click and go to tradable, all of this stuff, go ahead and just quick sell. It's not worth really anything on the market and the packs that you can get with them, just not worth it. So there's 3,400 coins that I just got right out of that. And again, go through your whole thing. So players, same situation. In all honesty, no one's probably going to buy silvers until they lower the over or lower the, the minimum that you can put it up for. But I'm not kidding. Like, I see no reason to do those sets. I would much rather just go ahead and quick sell all of these to get guaranteed coins because especially early on in the game, coins are supreme. If you don't have a lot of coins, you're not going to be able to do much in your game. So I just went ahead, hit X on every single one. That's how you multi-select. And I just made 6,000 coins as opposed to basically being able to do three of those trade-ins, which would have gotten me six golds and probably wouldn't have pulled anything anyways. Do the same thing with your bronzes. I only have one. You won't have very many. The golds, guys, you want to sell the auction house never quick sell your gold players make sure you go and check on how to get the most value out of them again i talked about a little bit earlier on same thing with team information in my opinion guys you can go to the auction house people will be buying these because of that pack go ahead and get the extra coins as well as all of these just go ahead and quick sell everything and you'll get a nice little bump in your coins early on you want to see where all of the high-end cards are or the x-factors you can go to the x-factor tab in my collection and you can go through all of these and see what ones are available i want to talk about the power-up collectibles real quick the high-end x-factor cards require well, can give you an option to either spend coins or the power-up collectibles. That's what you do with them. If you don't have an X-Factor that requires collectibles, in all honesty, there's no real point in keeping them if they are tradable. You can probably go ahead and sell them. The one thing I'll say is if you're going to use them, just make sure it's on the cheaper one, like 20K or a power-up collectible. I'd rather just pay the 20K and then wait until, you know, you're really saving yourself. But they settle in, it looks like around 20K in value. So just do the math there if it's worth it. But if they're untradable, just hold on to it. If they are tradable, I would go ahead and sell them unless you have one of these X-Factors that requires them. Next, we need to talk about hut challenges. The last way to play this game and it is really, really empty. It is super boring, really dry. I would recommend no one doing this if you actually want to have fun, but we need to talk about it. So every event, there will be event uh, hut challenges that you can go and do. So remember back in that set, you needed training camp collectibles. Well, this is how you go and do them. There's six uh, There's six right here during the EA Early Access one that you can go ahead and get those training camp players and that you use those to actually put them into packs. Now these, if you are watching this early on in the year and you want to really get ahead, coins is the ultimate way, and this is how you get coins. But my goodness, guys, this is such a time sink. And as you go through, there is so many. I would really recommend not doing it unless you are a hardcore grinder or you just like playing the offline mode. That's completely fine as well. That's completely up to you. That all depends on personal preference. I don't think they're worth the time. I'd rather play squad battles or rivals, but maybe you finished everything at the end of the week. Maybe start chipping away at these. But if you're not going to do them early on, don't do them at all because as the game goes along, the, the, the low amount of coins that you'll get here just is not going to be worth the time. And the last thing we want to talk about, guys, are the contents. So every single day, Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, you will get new content. It'll be something that maybe ties to the events. Maybe it'll tie to prime time. So every day you'll get prime times, the guys that have great games in the real life NHL from the night before. And every Wednesday, you will get team of the week. Fridays will be the new event days, and they are usually about two weeks in length. So just be aware of that. You will also get new packs available in the store. And I just want to briefly talk about power up icons. They are the icons, um, the old players, the the goats. There is real, um, as of time of this recording, there's no set to make them. You can only pack them. I would just hold on to them and wait to see what their value is. Not a lot of them will be all that useful, but I will have a video that will go through all of them that you can go ahead and check out. All right. Right, guys that is it thank you for hanging out if you are still here let me know in the comment section down below you are the real ones and i hope this teaches you everything you need to know about hockey ultimate team for nhl 22 have a good one